three, three, three. All right. Good evening, everyone. It's uh, Thursday. We're back at it again with some chemistry. Um, last Tuesday, we did a lot of stuff on types of chemical reactions. So tonight, the big thing is predicting the products of chemical reactions, which you kind of need to know the types to figure out. So that's the sequence. Um, I've been working a lot on these chemistry guides that I share with you from time to time, and I'll have one for predicting products this evening. Um, so hopefully uh, this is kind of helping me get my thinking together as I build these chemistry guides to share these things with you. So if you have comments, please do let me know. Be a little bit shorter tonight. I've got to run off and do some things, but uh, let's get started here. I do have a demo for you as well. And uh, if you're around, please say hello in the chat. Hello, Loretta. It's good to see you there. Andy, you as well. Good to see folks here this evening. Hopefully see some new faces as well. Let's jump over and uh, let's do some... Uh, here we go. Let's predict the products of some chemical reactions. So as a chemistry teacher, I can look at something like this. I can give a student a predicting problem and tell pretty quickly if they understand chemistry because there's a lot of different parts to it. So uh, why don't I do this one um, and then I'll give you a chance to do some of these and we'll see how we do. So if you're given something like this, right here, this type of reaction. You want to try to figure out what the products are. You need to know what type of reaction it is. So you have a metal, aluminum, and then oxygen gas. But you only have two types of atoms. And because of that, what type of reaction are you thinking? Two things come together, form one thing. So we get some kind of aluminum oxide here. The thing is, you need to know the charge on the aluminum and the oxygen to get the correct number for this. Because you have a metal and a non-metal, that's going to be ionic. So we need to think about charge. Let me see if I can get my table up here. There it is. So if you remember this table from earlier this semester here, we looked at aluminum. And aluminum is right here with gallium, 3+. plus. And oxygen, right here, two minus. Hey, Paige is here, Ox excellent. And uh, Isabella, very nice. Aluminum dioxide, uh, close Andy, but you only use the dye for covalent compounds. This is a metal and a non-metal, so it's gonna have to be ionic. So let's do this. We're gonna use the crisscross method. We're gonna take the three, move it down here, and the two here. And that's the formula for aluminum oxide. And the charges work out. They're all balanced. That's the answer. So we predicted it because we had two things come together as one, but then we saw it was ionic. We had to balance that charge out. It's not actually the entire equation is not balanced. Let me see if I can do that real quick. Uh, let's put a two here. So that'll get this, be an even number of oxygens. Put a three here. 3 times 2 is 6, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 2 is 4. That's the balanced equation. So that's the process when we're predicting the products of a reaction. That's the process that we'll go through. So let's see if we can't give you a chance to do one here. I'm going to get rid of this since we're done. Aluminum oxide. See if you can figure out the type of reaction and then what you'll end up getting. I should probably put this back here for you too. So see if you can predict the type of reaction and then the products. See, we have Bugas here. He retracted his message. I hope it was something nice. 
And Isabella, you got the oxygen, but aluminum will always be three plus. All right. So here's magnesium. That might give you a hint. So in this case, what we have is a single displacement. We have a metal and an acid. So magnesium, the metal pushes the hydrogen out and you get H, but you're never going to have H by itself. It'll always be H2, hydrogen gas. So you should see bubbles from this reaction. Mg, that goes with the Cl, but we're not finished. MgCl, is this the correct formula for magnesium chloride? Two plus, one minus, that doesn't work. So we move the two down here, two times one minus, that's two minus, that balances out, that's it. So let me clean that up, get rid of all this stuff here. And Isabel, you're right, MgCl2 plus H2, and Andy, you're close. It should be H2. If you always, when you have hydrogen by itself, it'll always be H2. So, uh, and this chloride's very soluble, so that's going to be aqueous. It'll dissolve, but you'll see the bubbles. And actually, I think I have some hydrochloric acid and magnesium with me right now. So let's see if we can actually see this happen. Uh, Andy, you're right. HCl is hydrochloric acid. It's a strong acid, too. Um, yeah, so I should wear goggles if I do that. <laughs> see if I get these on. There we go. So this is my uh, hydrochloric acid, clear acid, which is, you know, you can't tell. It looks just like water, but it will cause problems if you uh, get it on you or drink it. And then I have some magnesium metal right here. And so I'm going to put the metal right in with the uh, acid. And you probably can see right at the top, if I get my head out the way. There we go. You can kind of see it bubbling, seeing bubbles forming. The magnesium actually, it floats. And it's just... It's just making that metal dissolve. When we're done, all that metal will be gone. You might be able to even to hear it. I don't know if you can hear that. Can you guys hear it bubbling? I'm not sure if you can. But so if we leave this for a while. So Andy, your question about why wouldn't it be a proton? Um, on this side of the equation, Right here, it's H plus and Cl minus. So right here, it is a proton. Make that a little clearer. So right, right here, it is H plus because it's aqueous. But then it reacts and it forms the H2 in the single displacement. So you guys can hear it. <laughs> awesome. Well, I hope I don't dissolve my microphone because I saw a little bit of uh, a little bit of fumes coming out. You probably can't see it. Maybe you can see a little bit of the. I think that's just some water coming out of there. <laughs> All right. Uh, Isabel, you did that experiment a little a few weeks ago. Yeah, it's kind of a fun one to do. Awesome. So this is single displacement. And by doing it this way, the acid that reacts with the magnesium and some protons, some electrons are transferred. It is, re it is redox. So Andy, that's where the electrons are transferred from. MgCl2 plus H2. All right, let's do one or two more and... Uh, that might be enough for you guys. And then I'll give you the guide. I'll give you the link to the, the guide that I created. And I did a really, I think, I think a nice video on uh, predicting types of reactions with lots of practice. So if you need that, you could uh, do that. Can't see the screen. Here it comes. There you go. Yeah, probably not a good idea, Loretta, to breathe too much of that. Actually, when you you get something like that, if it has a little bit of acid, it'll taste very sour. So you'll know instantly and uh, you'll, you'll kind of pull back from it. You won't, you won't smell it for long. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's do this one. This is kind of a bit of a challenging one, but teachers love this one. 
see if you can predict the products here for PBNO3 plus Ki. I'm going to put back the periodic table. See if you can get that. Wow. And that piece of magnesium, it's gone. We don't, we don't have the magnesium there anymore. It's all dissolved. All right, so let's try this. This you hopefully can recognize as a double displacement reaction here. And with a double displacement reaction, the two metals, the positive ions here, they're just going to switch places. So that might give you an idea what your products will be. Close, Andy. You got the you got the PB one right, but you didn't balance your charges for the uh, the potassium nitrate. Very close, though. All right. So PB goes with the I, and the K goes with the NO3. So the metal always goes first. So you put the KNO3 first, and potassium one plus, and the whole nitrate ion is one minus. So you just have to memorize that. So that's why we end up with just KNO3. PB over here, we know this is one minus, so this has to be two plus. So if this is two plus and iodine right here is one minus, we need two of those. So that's why we, we have PBI two for that. But here's the deal. When you're predicting the products of a double displacement reaction, when you have the metal nonmetals, metal nonmetals, you have to look at solubility to make sure you have to figure out the states. And the only way to do that really is to either know your solubility rules or look at a solubility table. So I know nitrates, these here, they're always going to be soluble. So potassium nitrates, soluble. Lead though, if you look up lead on the periodic table, or I should say on a solubility table, lead to iodide, that's a solid. So what that means is this is your precipitate. So that's how you tell it falls to the bottom of your test tube. So is the magnesium oxidized? It went from Mg and then it was with the ClMg2+, so yes, that would be oxidized. Um, oxygen wouldn't really affect it from the air, though, in this case. Um, yeah, Isabel, you should write the metal first, so KNO3, and you don't need parentheses around the NO3, because this is 1 plus and this is all minus, so you don't need the parentheses. All right, let's do one more. And uh, yeah, that'll be, uh, where's the other one at? Yeah, let's do one more. So if you can do these, if you're doing these and you're getting these right, you're doing really well. Because I can tell you from teaching um, my students, they can kind of do the separate tasks, but when you give them that predicting the products, that kind of makes their brains break. Uh-oh, I just lost the... Uh, I just lost the last one. Let's put everything back. There it is. See, it's hiding. What a mess. You should have a bit of a mess when you're doing chemistry though, right? Okay. All right. So give this a try. See if you can predict the products of this reaction. It is a double displacement, but it's a special type, so it might trick you. Um, Jessica, no, it won't always take the same qu quantity of the charge. Oh, I guess it will. I, I see what you're saying. The charge always needs to add up to zero. So in that case, it should have the same charge. So if I had like um, Cu, not Cu, how about a Ca, Cl2? This is two plus, and then this would be one minus. So you would have two of them. So this would all equal two minus. This would equal two plus. The whole thing would be neutral. Does that answer your question? All right, let's see what we can do here. So the 
positive ions are going to switch places. So the hydrogen and the calcium, they switch places. And you should know that when you see hydrogen in front, it's probably going to be an acid. And when you see OH at the end of it with a metal, it's going to be a base. So this is an acid-base neutralization. So we get HOH. You probably recognize HOH, right? That's just two H's and an O, H2O. So Andy, you're right. We get the water there. And the looks like the calcium then will go with the nitrate. So always write the metal first. Let's give ourselves some room here. But again, we need to think about the charge. So calcium is in group two with magnesium. So it's two plus nitrate is one minus. So we need two nitrates, put some parentheses around them, put a two out there and you are done. Um, nitrates are really soluble. So this will be aqueous, water will be a liquid. And I think you'd need to balance the equation because you have two nitrates here and two over here. But uh, that's it. All right. So uh, I think what I'd like to do, any questions about that? And uh, Nisreen, you, uh, yeah, you got it. Nice job. I think, uh, do I still have my goggles on? I do. <laughs> All right. Um, and that piece of uh, magnesium about this big, it's gone. It's just dissolved. It's all MgCl2 in the liquid and the hydrogen escaped into the room. If you captured it, you could ignite it. It would be really cool and make a nice popping noise. All right, so let me give you the address to the guide that I just created. Um, where is it at? I bet it's on my clipboard. Let me drop that in chat for you. There it is. So that's the guide that I came up with. And the idea with these guides here let me show you. The idea with the guide here is that it has all the videos, like this is the video I just did today. I don't even know if anyone's watched it yet. Um, this is a really good video on types of reactions or finding ionic charges. So it gives you some ideas, some explanation, and then just lots of practice here. So that's the key. If you want to get really do well in chemistry, practice, practice is what you need to do. And some of them have video explanations as well for that specific problem. And then down here, there's all kinds of practice and all of the answers for you. So I'm hoping that this will really help you out and do well as you're trying to, to get through chemistry. If you have a big midterm or a final exam, working with figuring out the products of a reaction. If you can do that, you can do a ton of chemistry. Um, really, really help you uh, succeed on those exams. All right, thank you, Natalie. That's uh, appreciated. Um, if you see any errors in the guide here, and I'm sure there are probably some errors in the guide, um, my email address is at the end of it. Please send me an email and uh, I'll send you a nice email thanking you. Just tell me where, where you saw the problem, then I'll fix it. So that would be most appreciated. All right, I have to end a little bit early this evening. I do want to thank everybody that has showed up here. That's uh, it's good to see everybody here again. And I will be back on next Tuesday um, doing some more streaming. I'm not sure what the topic will be. So Robert Joyner, what is Robert Joyner doing on my stream? I will, I will have to mute him, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, so I will see you all back next Tuesday. Um, if you have an idea for a topic, you can uh, use that email again on the, the guide there and uh, let me know. So uh, this is Dr. B. As always, thanks for watching. Pete, I'll see you Tuesday. I see you just got there, but I'm about to hit the end stream button. Tuesday at 8.30, Eastern Standard Time.